Okay, mama. Okay. Thank you for the thank you for the kisses. <sighs> Good morning, guys. It's Friday. Like 6 a.m. <laughs> Just got home to wake up Noel. Get him ready for school. Go to work. Leave work. Go to the airport. And go to LA. It's gonna be a crazy weekend. Buckle your seatbelts, love bugs. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's survive the weekend. I'm already tired. <laughs> Alright guys, I look like I'm going back to Vegas with my EDC hoodie and bag, but it's cold. It needs to be warm. 2.30, two hours to boarding time. On top of it all, I got observed by some of my supervisors today, which I knew they were coming, and like I love when they come because they're all super nice and they're always happy with what they see. But you know, an observation at work is always like stressful just because that's who I am. But they came, they were super happy. We saw, we conquered, we came, saw, conquered, whatever. Work is done. Now I am ready to go take my car to where it's gonna be parked for the weekend and head to the airport. This weekend has already tired me out. I mean, I was tired this morning. Oh, all right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go to LA. Safe, 321. An hour, almost a little bit more than an hour before boarding starts. Still waiting for my Uber. <laughs> Wish me luck, guys. This is actually my first time flying since I've gotten global entry and I really like it. It's pretty cool. Alright, I've got my in-flight essentials. Comfy cozy, at the gate, some pick by Melissa cupcakes, and a mocha cap with a double shot of espresso, which I wanted to nap in the plane, so I don't know if this was the smartest idea, but hey, we did it. We got it. We're gonna do it. And I'm just waiting. Yay! Y las otras que trajiste también. Y esta es de todas las fritas ahora. Alright guys, please excuse the crazy look right now. So, this video was meant to be a very nice, fun vlog for you guys, but it turned out to be a very different kind of video. So, I guess we're going to do a little story time right now, and this is the update or the tea or whatever you want to call it of why I never made it to LA. It was very close. I was really excited. I was happy for the trip. I had to go to the airport straight from work. So Noelle was picked up from school with the school bus and taken to uh, my job, the school where I work at, and my mom was going to pick him up from there. I'm calling my mom because I always just call her like a million times. So like the time that she was supposed to be out of work already and she's not answering, I'm like, okay, maybe she's driving, whatever. I sit down at the gate, it's about 15 minutes before boarding time, and I try calling again. And this time, Noelle answers her cell phone, hysterically crying. So I'm like trying to understand him, I'm like, what's wrong, what's the matter, what's wrong? I thought maybe he was like, you know, upset about something or like wanted a toy that he didn't get or, you know, I thought it was something trivial. And he's like, um something's wrong with grandma i'm like what do you mean something's wrong with grandma he's like mommy she's not responsive she's not responsive something's wrong with grandma crying 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 i'm like where are you noah where are you he's like we're in the car she won't get out of the car all this stuff so i start losing it because i'm like in the airport not there don't know what to do i stand up i start gathering my things i start going crazy i'm like no, I'll call 911, call 911 right now, and I start running out of the airport. In this, you know, as I'm running and he's freaking out and stuff, he sees a cop car pass by, and he's like, Mommy, the cops are passing, the cops are passing. I'm like, No, I'll go, stop them, stop them. So he gets out of the car and he flags the cops down, and the cops stop, they call the ambulance. During the Uber ride, I'm making phone calls to Noel, the cops are there. The ambulance gets there, I'm talking to the cops, I'm calling my brothers, I'm updating everyone, I'm like trying to figure out what's going on, uh, trying to figure out what's going to happen with Noelle, what's happening with my mom. Um, so the Uber driver hears all of this. He drops me off, I put my luggage back in my car, I sit down in the car, um, turn it on, put the heat on, 
while I'm trying to figure out, at this point I still don't even know where I'm going because I don't know what hospital they're taking her to and I don't know where they're taking Noelle. I'm waiting for them to call me back with information and the Uber driver must have like gone around the block and came back and saw me in the car <clears throat> and he like blocks me in and he calls the cops on me. This is such an SHIT show. Like it was really crazy. And he's like, he's on the phone with the cops. He's like, no, I don't need a police car. I'm an Uber driver. My customer wants to drive. I just need you to tell her that she can't drive. And I'm telling the guy, I'm like, sir, I'm not driving. I'm sitting in my car because it's cold and I put the heat on. I don't even know where I'm going yet. Like, I'm not driving. And he just was completely ignoring me, which, you know, I understand safety. It was very nice what he did. I'm like, this is my boyfriend's house. He's not home from work yet. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. And he's ignoring me. And then just then my man pulls up. And I get in his car, and the guy leaves. We drive around the block a couple times, and he takes me back to my car. And in this, you know, interim, I heard back from where they were taking Noel. So they took Noel to the police station to hold him there, because there was, like, no one close or nowhere else that they could put him. I go to the police station, I pick up my son from the police station, I pick up my nine-year-old from the police station, which is a sentence I never thought I was going to have to say in my life. Um, and then we go to... The emergency room well first let's backtrack and i'll tell you the story of what like happened before the hospital which i didn't find out about until later but i'll just tell it to you now so apparently like my mom thought she was like she felt fine i saw her like in the morning before she went to work she gave me a big hug she was happy she's like have a safe flight you know blah blah call me later all this stuff like she was fine one of her co-workers lives close to my job so she drove her so when they parked the car my mom won't unlock the door for her co-worker and her co-worker's like you know i i don't know how to open the door and my mom's ignoring her and according to my mom she says she was doing all this on purpose to like mess around with her which is this is not how you mess around with people but she's like i was conscious i was making the decisions on purpose like blah 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 so she finally unlocks the door for the lady, the lady leaves, my mom goes into my job to get Noelle. So then they get in the car and he tells me that she started driving with the car door open. And he was like, Grandma, close the door. And she was ignoring him. And he's like, Grandma, close the door. And she was ignoring him. And he started crying. He's like, Grandma, you have to close the door, you have to close the door. And he says that the door kind of just closed on its own like a block and a half later. Gets home, thank God finds a parking spot. And thank God, because Noelle wanted Wendy's, thank God, like, she forgot to go. She gets home, thank God, parks the car. She parked the car terribly. She parked all up on the sidewalk, all diagonal. Then, when the ambulance finally did get there, she started convulsing. So, like, all of this leading up to it was, it was a seizure. It was already the seizure happening. What she's not understanding is that a seizure is not only convulsions. People can have a seizure and not even know it. Like, there's all different symptoms of it. The cops and all the doctors kept telling Noel that, like, he saved her life because, um, he acted and he acted fast. Like, if they would have been in the house or something, or if he didn't notice, or if he wasn't there, if I didn't call, like, all these, if things happened differently, like, this would be a very different story right now. So then, let's fast forward again to when I get to the ER with Noel she's there her eyes are rolled in the back of her head there's like a million doctors around her um they're asking her to move her legs wiggle her toes she wasn't moving her legs she wasn't moving her left arm <clears throat> her right arm she was like moving and wiggling a little bit but that's it then when i got there one of the doctors was like wait wait your daughter's here your daughter's here and she wasn't really speaking she was just kind of grunting she's like uh uh, uh. and they're like do you know your daughter's name and she's like, Ro. And they're like, okay, you see? And then the doctor turns to like the other doctors and he's like, you see guys, you guys are really quick to intubate, but if we had intubated her, then we wouldn't have seen that she was responding and that she knows and like she's she's still there with us, blah, blah, we wouldn't have been able to see that. After she like said Ro, like they kept asking her questions and she was just grunting again, like, uh, uh, uh whatever. And then she fell asleep. And she slept until, um, until about eight o'clock. And when my brother came in, she woke up and i'm like next to her and she looks at me like like her eyes are not rolled back in her head anymore like she looks straight at me straight in the eyes and she gets this big smile on her face and she's like why are you here <laughs> i'm like 
where else am I going to be, Ma? And she's like, oh, are you leaving tomorrow? I'm like, no, I missed the job. I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going to L.A. And she's like, oh, like, your, your boyfriend must be so happy you're not going to L.A. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's happy. So then she was moving. She was uncomfortable, so she was, like, moving her legs and moving her arms and trying to get comfortable, so that was a good sign. Um, then from ER, they moved her up to ICU. I spent the night sleeping on, like, three chairs <laughs> next to her in the ICU. Um, my brother ended up leaving at, like, 11. He took Noel with him to go sleep over his house. And at, like, 1.30 in the morning, my mom wakes up again. And <laughs> she was, like, in, in a very chatty mood. And we were, like, talking for, like, an hour and a half, laughing hysterically. She kept repeating the same stories again and again she kept telling me the story of what happened and that she knew what was happening and she was doing it all on purpose and she was trying to scare noel and she was messing around with them and she didn't understand that like those decisions while she did make them on purpose there was something causing her to make bad decisions like it was her conscious decision but it wasn't the right decision you know what I mean like she wasn't herself and she wasn't getting that <clears throat> she still doesn't really get that um but <clears throat> they did a cat scan and they found a brain tumor which is <clears throat> what they think uh what they thought at the time that had caused the seizure so <clears throat> we're in ICU laughing hysterically cracking up for like an hour and a half and then <laughs> The nurse keeps coming in to tell me nicely like don't you want to go home and take a nap? Don't you want to go rest for a little bit? Maybe you should let your mom rest because with me there she kept wanting to talk and wanting to talk So she finally fell asleep at like three I was on the phone not giving her conversation. So that's why she kind of started trying to doze off so I left at like 3 30 to um Plus, I think we were disrupting like all of ICU because we were like laughing and stuff so I left, I went to his house, I took a nap because I didn't want to go home alone. Um, I went back to the hospital at like 8 in the morning. <clears throat> um, we stayed in ICU until about midday. My brother came back and we got moved to another floor uh, where she spent the rest of Saturday. So Sunday, she's like freaking out. She's like, I'm fine, I want to go home, I don't want to be here anymore, blah, blah. And apparently according to law, when you have a seizure, you can't drive for six months or so. She was acting very weird, throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum, being very defiant with the doctor. So she was saying that she's not gonna take the meds because she felt very like wonky and like kind of high and tired and weird in the hospital and she didn't like that feeling. The pills are not gonna always feel like this, but she's just like, no, I don't care. I'm not taking them. I'm still gonna drive. I'm leaving the hospital today, whether they let me or not. I don't care. I don't wanna be here, blah, blah, blah. So it was like just very difficult to see her like that <clears throat> and to know that like she didn't want to listen to what she had to do or get the help that she needed like i was just freaking out <laughs> like after seeing her the day before two days whatever on friday with her eyes rolled back in her head like i really thought that that was it that i was losing my mom and then to see her like no i'm not gonna listen i'm not gonna take the medicine it was just very hard for me um she has been taking it though thank god um but we ended up getting discharged on Sunday. They found a brain tumor. <sighs> the really good news is that the brain tumor is benign. So thank God it's not cancerous. But um, it's, it's slow growing. But they still have to monitor it like every six months to check on its growth and its positioning. And mind you, we were really scared this whole time because my dad had a stroke and the stroke left him like not there <laughs> so we were all really scared that it was a stroke because um you know we went through that with my dad even my mom one of the times that she woke up she kept asking the doctor she's like my husband died of a stroke my husband died of a stroke did i have a stroke and they're like, no, it was a seizure, you have a tumor, blah, blah, blah. So, <clears throat> that was my weekend, instead of being in LA. I'm sorry, my camera keeps shutting off. Um, 
I'm gonna wrap this up because it says the internal temperature is too high but and just please keep us in your prayers and send some love our way and then yeah I'll see you guys really soon <laughs> with better 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 spirits in another video I love you guys bye